Hello Zero K fans and welcome to Nanalee is at Dawn. I'm your host Shadow Fury 333 and today we're gonna start off with a game between Capricious and Andrew Y2K. Capricious really wants me to show off a game where they win. I of course do not free screen games so I have no idea whether or not they're going to win but I figure eventually they're gonna win so I'll cast a couple of their games today. First thing is Andrew Y2K and the next one I don't remember offhand I, but we'll get to that afterwards. Flipstep on Onyx Cauldron. Anyway, that is going to be the next couple games, so starting out with that, and let us begin. So, Andrew Y2K going for Cloakybot Factory, while, sorry, Capricious is going, for, actually both of them are, so that was correct, despite me not looking at the right player. So, both players going for Cloakybots, which on Isle of Grief is a little unusual. Normally you see Amphibious Bots, or occasionally Hovercraft. Sometimes gunship. I mean, given the way that the start locations are set up, gunships are very popular. But no, Cloakybot Factory. And Capricious going for slightly earlier scouting. Looks like Andrew Y2K really wanted to get that economy up first. Pretty confident that they are not going to be attacked early on, whereas Capricious much more focused on actually attacking early on, which, I mean, Andrew Y2K's confidence is well placed. It is a relatively long rush distance, so unless it was Capricious going for the Cloakybot, sorry, the gunship factory. This would not be a problem, and it isn't, because Capricious is not going for the Gunship Factory. They are, in fact, going for the Cloakybot Factory. And Capricious going for the Water Expansions over the west side of the map, not the Natural Expansion. Going for that a bit later. Which is an interesting way of setting this up. On the other hand, Andrew Y2K not even expanding very quickly. Actually, also going towards the Water Expansion, but with their Commander, rather than with the Constructor. That being said, though, Andrew Y2K is not being very aggressive right now. One thing that was pointed out, I was reading about how this map kind of allows for naked expansion. If you protect this little line here and the one over here, the one to the water and one over to the western side of the base, right west of the starting plateau, you can basically naked expand with impunity. However, only Andrew Y2K has taken advantage of that, and honestly, I wouldn't say with impunity, this glaive, if Capricious is checking to make sure that the expansion over to the southwest does exist, which it does not, if they checked the main base, though, they'd actually <clears throat> they'd actually have had a really good shot at taking out Andrew Y2K's economy, but now it's too late. Really, that's just unlucky. I mean, Capricious had all the reason in the world to check this southwest expansion, and Andrew Y2K just did not build there yet. On the other hand, Capricious sending in a larger army from the western side, probably going to have to punch through... No, it won't be hard to punch through those glaives, but their own attacking glaive, Capricious losing that... Ouch. I mean, like I said, that was just unlucky that they didn't attack the main base when they did, that Capricious had not, sorry, Andrew Y2K had not set up the southwest. They're going instead for the southeast. At the same time, though, Capricious does have a stronger economy. They have more expanders going out, they have their expansions already set up, and they have a bit of a stronger army to defend it. Although, right now, oh, did Capricious see this? They did! Capricious had the radar going, so they do know, at least, that Andrew Y2K was attacking. And is now retreating because there's no way those glaives are getting in. Capricious's glaives are going to be winning that fight. So, Andrew, are they going to be attacking the eastern side? It looks like they are. They are indeed attacking the eastern side. Capricious, are they going to be going for a counterattack right now? Because they don't have anything over to the eastern side to defend this. I mean, they might. They're definitely sending some glaives over to the east, but they don't have any defenses planned. They have their commander, though, and I think what they're thinking is... Okay, lightning rifle commander. Yeah, that I'd be confident, too. Quite honestly, I think that's fine. The Lightning Rifle Commander against three Glaives was not going to have any issues dealing with them. Same time, Capricious going for the attack over to the southwest, and that is going to not work right now. But then again, neither is Andrew's attack, and Capricious able to actually pull away some Andrew's forces and pincer them a little bit. Looks like a slight profit for Capricious. No, it's about even. So both lost two. Although Capricious with a better territory position... Andrew Y2K going to try to counterattack this, so Capricious is about to lose these glaives. Are they gonna they better run away? If they don't run away, that's going to be a problem. Although not bad micro so far. Like two for one for Capricious, but still they need to basically win all the engagements two for one, and this is not gonna happen. Capricious running away, as they should at this point. I mean Andrew forcing them back, but at the same time, Capricious attacking the eastern side, and Andrew with a bit of a defender set up. That'll take out, I think. Two, no, three glaives. Yeah, two defenders takes out three glaives. This is not enough. There are four glaives that will manage to get through. At the same time, oh, is that going to mean Andrew's... Andrew looks a bit distracted, though. 
Fortunately for them, Capricious has no easy way of attacking the western side anymore, and Andrew gets all the reclaim. Nice, so Andrew is taking that opening. And Capricious, they are going to be having a bit of a harder time economically speaking. Looks like both players switch over to Warrior simultaneously. Neither one going for Rocco's, neither one trying to basically read the Warriors and attack them. No, instead, Mass Warrior, just a straight transition. She Warrior Zeus in both cases, too. Man, Rocco's would have a field day here, but I don't think either player knows. Once either player does know, it'll be a different story. And Andrew, okay. Where are, they, are they gonna try to go around the back? Looks like they are. They're going for a commander rush around the back. This I have never seen someone do on this map. Does Capricious have any way of knowing? They do, actually. They do have a bit of radar knowledge that Andrew Y2K's commander is over here. And just double checking. No, the water's to or the land on, under the water is totally flat. So that is going to be quite effective. Capricious, however, does have the stronger economy. They don't have defenses over in the back. That's where the commander is going through. It's going to be going around and back up here. That's what its plan is. And Andrew just needs to protect that. Make sure that it's, well, not obvious that it's going in, which it kind of is because it's getting close. Oh, no, never mind. No, it's a recon commander. What am I saying? It's going to jump in right here. That's what's happening. I'm going to be seeing a jump to this spot pretty shortly. And Andrew trying to push in. Both players pretty much taking half the map right now. Andrew has the entire southwest. Capricious has the entire northeast. And here's Andrew's attack. Capricious with nothing to defend. Andrew's commander with cloaking field too. So personal cloak, beam laser. That was a bit of a giveaway though. The jump was basically the only giveaway. And an infiltrator already... Well, it's already in place, but it doesn't... They don't know where the commander is. It's going towards the main base. It won't be detected, I don't think, by the solar collectors. Same time, we do have some warriors coming in. Warrior Zeus fight, and I believe Capricious is going to lose this. Yeah, Capricious has no real chance in this one. But now they know that Rockus would be of some use, though I suppose that's also kind of true of Hermits. Definitely true of Rockos. And Andrew Y2K just taking more and more of this. The commander in the main base, though, that being the biggest problem. Capricious probably knows something's up. Something's around there. Andrew's commander finally being decloaked, finally being revealed. Is Capricious paying attention? I don't know, because it's going to jump into the water as soon as it gets threatened. Oh, no, it's not. It's going straight for the main. Sorry, not for the main, for the Cloakybot factory. But that was not the best move, because now it cannot jump into the water. It's going to get infiltrated, or going to get stunned out by the infiltrator and basically destroyed. Now, of course, this is a good place to blow up to destroy the, everything in the base, but at the same time, Andrew's commander losing their commander, especially with all the reclaim that's there. That's a lot of juicy reclaim. Yeah, 750 so far already being taken by the caretakers. So massively increasing Capricious's economy, right? I mean, this is... This is really useful for Capricious right now. That was, I think, the one thing that Andrew did not want to have happen, because now Capricious has this awesome economy going for them. I mean, they can be building a fusion, because why not? They need more caretakers, honestly. They need a couple just to reclaim the commander. And then a couple more just to use all that reclaim. But yeah, this is going to be awesome. Now let's see if Capricious turned this around. That's the biggest thing. If Capricious turns this around, that will make Andrew Y2K regret everything they've done so far in this game. Or at least everything they did with that commander. Because that was a lot of investment. That's a lot of money that was basically lost. Of course, the economy as well. They were at parity, and now no longer. And parity is kind of important, pretty important. I mean, especially with all the reclaim from the glaives lost. And now the army gone. So hey, hermits do actually do a pretty good job. Wasn't sure what their range was though. Yeah, 350 compared to 280, it's a bit higher. And compared to the warriors, 240, 270. So yeah, that helps. And heavy tank as well. I mean, Capricious is known for this though. Capricious really likes the heavy tanks when they don't know, well, it's a safe thing for them. It's it's their confidence zone. But Andrew going for air. Probably going to set up some Thunderbirds. Possibly set up... I don't think they're going to see Phoenixes. That wouldn't make sense. Thunderbird would make a lot of sense, though. Stun this all out and then let the follow-up forces come in. And we are going to be having... Nothing so far. We'll get back to it. No, it is in fact a Phoenix. They are going for the Phoenix, despite the fact that there aren't a large number of units. Maybe they suspect Flea somewhere, or Venom Army, or switch back to Glaives. Against this army, Phoenix would be nice to soften things up, but I don't know if it's really the best option. <clears throat> Especially given that... What is there? Oh, wait, is this... 
Wow, for a riot, that's got enough range to basically counter skirmish. Or counter riot. It's effectively a skirmisher against these two. So overall, Capricious right now... No, well, so much for the red back. I was about to say, Capricious right, now, Capricious right now in an awesome position, but no, that red bag had to go and die to a giant laser. Oh, of course, that would be the other way to use the Phoenix. Attack the main, attack one of the bases. Though, quite frankly, it doesn't really matter. I mean, basically, there's so many caretakers here repairing everything and building up Goliaths, building up... Okay, let's see how Goliath works here. I mentioned last game I didn't like the use of a Goliath, but then people commented, no, Reapers aren't that useful. If you want to go for tanks, you want to get a higher weight class. Otherwise, you just go for Striders. It's a fair point, and... Capricious wins! Hey! Not even needing that Goliath, just winning from an attack, making Andrew Y2K realize there wasn't an easy way in, and hey, Capricious, I casted you winning a game. You're welcome, I guess. Congratulations. But yeah, so Capricious has finally won a game on my channel. That was casted. Without pre-screening, but I figured eventually. But yeah, well done. That was actually a fairly close match. Getting the commander, though, that was a big thing. Just seeing that commander, having the infiltrator, knowing, oh, hey, something's coming up. That infiltrator was a really good call. Because then the commander just went down no problem. And after that, everything was just a matter of, essentially, steamrolling. I mean, between the hermits tanking everything and the redbacks for a bit of extra damage. And then on top of that, of course, the standard cloaky assault force. Basically, we didn't even see the Goliath come out. That would have definitely sealed things in that situation. Most definitely, but yeah. But anyway, as I was mentioning before, in the other game on Altier Crossing, apparently the Goliath was actually a pretty good choice, and it generally is a good choice. Partly, like I said, it's a weight class thing. There's no point getting Reaper Banisher if you just use what you already have in your factory so far. But also, the Goliath, it's just more a matter of making sure it stays back enough that it gets its shots off. But in that situation, given all the hills, it was hard. This situation, though, flat ground, open area, a lot of units that could just go down easily. A lot of Zeus, too. A lot of relatively heavy units. So in this case, the Goliath makes a lot of sense. So anyway, that is going to be it for that match. And the next match, like I said, is Capricious versus Flipstip on Onyx Cauldron. That is going to be up in a couple minutes, so stay tuned.